Hey, what's up, everybody? We have a new YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe right now. Leave a comment on the video. Share it with your friends. It's also a podcast. Three and out. Wherever you listen with me, John Middlecoff, Apple, Spotify, we have you covered. As well as thevolume.com. We have merch. Check out. I got three and out hats right now. Thevolume.com. Search the podcast. Buy some merch. Okay, it's AFC NFC Championship game week. Headed down the home stretch, only a couple days till Sunday. Uh, Doesn't get much bigger. Lamar had some interesting comments today that I don't only think he was right, but it kind of brings into light how how lucky we are. And the NFC, we we talked about this last, Chiefs have a couple injuries that one looks worse than the other. But uh, the NFC, we we talked last week about the pressure rankings coming into the, uh, you know, the final eight teams. I don't really think that's changed uh, coming into the final four being Brock Purdy and, and Kyle Shanahan, the pressure, the way the conversation will shape and just listen, they're a massive, massive favorite at home for a reason. They've been the best team in the NFC all season long. And then something happened today with the Miami Dolphins. Vic Fangio mutually departed. Uh, now all signs look like he's headed to the Philadelphia Eagles. I, kind of a baffling more to the story on that one. I'm sure to come out over the next couple days before we dive into some football though, uh, grab, grab your iPad, grab your smartphone and download a little thing. We like to call game time. They're the official ticketing app of this podcast. They are my friends. They are my partners. And most notably I use them and I use them consistently. You go to anything. You want to go to a football game. You want to go to a basketball game. You want to go to a concert. You want to get out of the house. Do all you do is work. I can relate. We just work, work, work. Don't have a life, family, wife, girlfriend, getting honest. Like we need to do something else. I'm like, I'm just working. And then you get in this tunnel vision and then you go out and have a good time. You're like, God, I've missed that. Well, I'm throwing you a deal right now. Go to a comedy show, to a concert, to a game and do it on me. Promo code, John, promo code, John, J O H N J O H N. You a Lions fan, a Niner fan, a Chiefs fan, a Ravens fan. You want to go to the old Super Bowl? Well, I might have you covered because look at if your team gets in, promo code John, $20 off. Can't recommend them enough. Wanted to start with the uh, the American Football Conference. And Lamar Jackson, when talking earlier today on, on Wednesday, mentioned that he viewed playing Patrick Mahomes as like, you know, a heavyweight fight. And I started thinking, one thing is not debatable. It's much more difficult these last several years in the AFC than it is in the NFC in terms of quarterbacks. I mean, last year, Daniel Jones was in the second round. This year, last year, you're talking Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, and and now C.J. Stroud has thrown his hat in the ring. It's not even close. Last year, Herbert, Trevor Lawrence, when he was capable the premium quarterbacks that are in the AFC, it's why we talked about coming into this season how difficult that conference would be. And I think what's cool about this matchup is like, let's face it, we've seen Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes happen three times. (laughs) And it hasn't worked out for Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills. That sucks. Now, I, I, like most people, I saw 50 million people watch that game on Sunday. I don't think it gets much better than that. You could argue Buffalo is the best home field advantage at night in the cold in terms of a viewer on their couch. It just pops. It just works. Lambeau's pretty special. I'm talking these old school stadiums that just have a purity to it. When I used to go to a lot of games, when I first got into this business uh, and started doing radio, Candlestick was still around. And then I used to go to a lot of games at the Oakland Coliseum. And listen, Those places were complete shitholes. Candlestick, they literally blew it up. And the Coliseum, they should blow up that entire area. I dynamite it all. Oracle as well. But there was, if you were at a football game and the game was good, there was something special about it. Weren't many uh, suites. Wasn't really some elitist crowd. Listen, I've been to a lot of games at Levi's. It's a high-end consumer because it costs a lot to get in there. The, The suite prices are absurd. Right, That's what most of these new stadiums are. When you go to these old, dilapidated places, it's just about the sport. And listen, as if I ran a business, if I was one of these owners, I'd want to get rid of that too. The best thing that ever happened to the 49ers' ownership in terms of wealth was getting a new stadium. 
getting out of candlesticks. So I get it. And the Buffalo Bills have been trying hard to get a new stadium, but that's pretty special. That that is that's an awesome place to watch. But ultimately, it was Josh Allen versus Patrick Mahomes. Doesn't get much better than that. The last two years in the conference championship, it was Joe Burrow versus Patrick Mahomes. And now we're getting Lamar Jackson versus Patrick Mahomes. I mean, those three players alone, or excuse me, four players, Mahomes, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, and uh, and Joe Burrow. I mean, we're talking well over a billion dollars worth of quarterback. <laughs> I mean, those are the four best, when healthy, easily the four best quarterbacks in the NFL. I would Obviously, Mahomes has set in stone the number one spot, what he's earned and his resume over the six years. And then it kind of ebbs and flows between the other three, right? So it, it doesn't get any better. And the NFC has Jared Goff was the number one overall pick, but no one's putting Jared Goff in those conversations. Part of the reason we never shut up about Brock Purdy, which is exhausting, he was the last pick in the draft. Before that, it was Baker Mayfield, who was on his third team. I mean, the, the quarterback situation, Jordan Love had never had played one game as the like one of the last picks in the first round from like four years ago up until this season. And up until about two months ago, he wasn't very good. His own team was like, yeah, I don't know. We'll see how these last 10 games go. So the cream of the crop is in the AFC. And where I come around on this game initially is I, I'm not, I, as of right now, I don't have any money on the Ravens. I, I took the Ravens last week, minus nine and a half. Their roster is just, anyone that's watched them start to finish is just superior to basically every other team. And we saw them play what we view as the, the best roster in the NFL, and they destroyed them in the Niners. Now you can be like, well, they got some lucky tips or whatever. Like, they kicked their ass. And the Ravens are a complete team, right? Part of Buffalo's problem is defensively, they couldn't get a stop to save their life. If Hardeman doesn't fumble out of the corner of the end zone, I mean, they probably lose that game by double digits. That's not the problem here. The other thing the Ravens have going for them, beside an offense which statistically is not as good, just in terms of his rush touchdowns, his pass touchdowns, as some of his previous years, he's better than he's ever been right now. Lamar Jackson, to me, has taken a step this season into superstardom. I know he was really famous and he had won an MVP, He's dramatically better as a player, in my opinion, just from watching football, than he has been, you know, especially early on in his career. He's not as dependent on as a runner, yet he is still an elite runner. And he is much more calm and collected when he's scrambling around to ultimately pass. And he, you just fear him uh, in every element of the game. But their defense is dominant. I mean, their front four, they don't have famous guys in the front beside Clowney. They are a dominant group. They're two linebackers, you could argue, are the best in the business right there with Fred Warner and Dre Greenlaw. But Kyle Hamilton, like the, one of the reasons I think the Chiefs could be in a little trouble is obviously they're very dependent on Kelsey. They need him to play well, right? They, they don't have many other good wide receivers. And he did last week. Had a couple touchdowns, makes big plays. And he's a prime time, as Dickie V would say, a PT peer, right? Well, they have the ability to somewhat neutralize him with two good linebackers and a safety that was born to cover tight ends. So if he can't really get going, and Pacheco is currently on the injury report, though I would imagine he plays, he's, it's going to be tough to run for 80-plus yards against these guys. I looked his over-under on DraftKings was like 60 or low 60s. So and I, I, like everybody, loves Pacheco. But this is a matchup that really favors the Ravens in, in terms of like, a conference championship against the defending champs and the number one seed. I mean, we're, I'm not acting like this is some elite team against some middle of the road team. I'm talking about you're playing the, the 2.0 version of Brady and Belichick in Mahomes and Andy Reid, which is why I'm hesitant to bet against them. Cause I, I didn't have money on the Sunday night game. I, I would have taken the bills and I would have been kicking myself. You just bet against Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes. Are you a fucking idiot? That, that would have been my mindset. And obviously the Chiefs have the coaching advantage here, but John Harbaugh's pretty damn good. And I think what separates this team is their coordinators. I mean, to me, Mike, McDan Mike McDonald is the currently the best defensive coordinator in the NFL. That, that can ebb and flow on a given year, but I, I would, if I could have any guy as my defensive coordinator next year, I, I would pick him. Now, he might end up being a head coach. It's hard to tell how all these dominoes are going to fall. Like, it's like, well, the Lions could lose both coordinators. Are we sure? Like, to where? 
what job openings? Chargers hire Harbaugh. Raiders jobs already filled. Are these guys going to the Panthers? What if the Falcons end up with Belichick? Like, where are the openings here? The Patriots are already filled. You know, I think we see think all these guys are going places, and then you start doing the musical chairs. You're like, a lot of chairs have people sitting in them right now. So, um, my early reaction is I I I'm like the Ravens. Now, I, I would probably if this number gets to it's keeps moving up, uh, like the Chiefs. But I think the the ability to just slow down Travis Kelsey is something that would be a major problem for Kansas City. But like Lamar says, this is a heavyweight matchup. It doesn't get any better than this. I saw a headline that the Ravens are pulling out all the stops. Ray Lewis, Jonathan Ogden, like leading out the team, you know, hitting the drum. Uh, it's going to be badass. And to me, the AFC, when you factor in the the pageantry of the cold, it's something dependent on who's hosting the NFC games isn't a factor. And it's a huge factor in football. Like, I'm a sucker for that, right? I'm not acting like... I'm not rooting for the Niners this week, but just in terms of if I was indifferent and was on my couch, I would rather watch a cold weather game. I would in January. And uh, that's why the AFC, we're talking heavyweight fighters. DraftKings Sportsbook, an official betting partner of the NFL playoffs, is bringing you an offer to help make the playoffs electrifying. New customers can bet five bucks on any game and get 200 instantly in bonus bets. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook now and use code John. New customers can bet 5 bucks to get 200 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code J-O-H-N, John. The crown is yours. Speaking of the NFC, I said last week, in terms of the pressure rankings, I didn't even think it was close. John Harbaugh already has a ring. Lamar Jackson's in like the prime of his career under contract for the foreseeable future. Yes, if they were to lose on Sunday at home, that would suck. Or they make the Super Bowl and they don't win, that would suck. But those guys are so ingrained and entrenched in the organization. Like, let's face it. You, you can't ask, well, can John Harbaugh ever win the big one? It's like, yeah, he did, 2012. One of the things with Kyle Shanahan, and you could feel it watching that game on Saturday night. You're like, he's really going to blow it at home? as an enor- enormous favorite against a team who's about to fire their defensive coordinator, he's he's playing Joe Barry in a chess match. That guy is going to be relieved of his duties Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Turns out it was Wednesday. <laughs> but he's he's holding on for dear life for his job. And he's coming down the home stretch. And the Purdy thing is, I've defended him. And I will continue to defend him. He's a really good player. But that, that was an alarming experience. Now, if it doesn't rain, we should get a better version of him. And he's playing the Lions, who, let's face it, their pass defense sucks. Their corners are not good. So if Aiden Hutchinson, if you just block him, like something some of these teams have, they just like leave him unblocked. I don't, I don't know what you think the number two pick in the draft, it's six seven and an elite pass rusher. I, I'd probably want to get a hat on a hat there. To me, the 49ers should win this game. <laughs> now, I, I would bet the farm if you told me Debo was 100% healthy. I, I'd be like, I think the 49ers are scoring 40-plus in this game with Debo being very much up in the air. And it's hard to tell tell they're being mum about it. If he broke his shoulder again uh, and they're trying to shoot it up and play through the pain, you know, who knows? Maybe he plays a play and gets tackled and then he's out. So I, I think he is a big swing guy. Clearly when he's on the field and it's not raining, this offense is dominant. It's elite. The only time they struggled with him on the field this season was against the Baltimore Ravens, who, like we said, I think it's the best defense in the league with the best defensive coordinator. But the the pressure on Kyle Shanahan and Brock Purdy, like I I am not some Brock Purdy hater. I've said all along, he was excellent this season. You can't watch him and go, that's a big-time quarterback, the way he played throughout the regular season. If you've watched the 49ers during their, their run of all these teams making runs to the championship game, he is easily the best version of any quarterback they've had, and it's not even close. Like, he is dramatically better than the best version of Jimmy, which wasn't bad. But, like, you don't play well in this environment when all the these people are watching. The, the overreaction is going to lean negative. And this notion that, like, it's just it's just a narrative that's out there. It's, we've seen Kyle replace quarterbacks. We've seen him do it constantly, even with the 49ers. We, we've been talking about this all week. Got rid of Jimmy, then got rid of Trey. 
even told Brock Purdy last year, like, hey, man, my gig Tom Brady, if he can come out of retirement, you'll be his backup. He's ruthless. He's cutthroat. This is the National Football League. <laughs> Walsh, Parcells, Belichick. These guys are kind of ruthless. Hell, sneaky Andy's pretty good at that, too. He just kind of has a smile on his face. He's gotten rid of a lot of guys over the years. And, like, th- this notion that, like, this guy is a lock to be the quarterback for the next 10 years, h- how could you say that? Now, if he plays well in this game and then they win the Super Bowl, like, they, it's not like they're giving him a contract extension after the second year. They're not even allowed to do that. So you, you could feel, I'm telling you, I, I've been watching this team for so long. It, it wasn't even just, I couldn't believe they were going to lose. It was, you could feel this pressure on the offense and the quarterback every single snap of that game on Saturday. Now, one of his defining characteristics, like think about the other quarterbacks that are currently playing, the other three guys. Jared Goff was the number one pick in the fucking draft. The number one pick in the draft. He's one of like five quarterbacks to ever take multiple franchises to the conference championship. That includes like Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, Joe Montana, Brett Favre. I mean, it's a a pretty good list. Kurt Warner. A lot of guys wearing gold jackets in that list. So Jared Goff has had some low moments, but he's had a pretty freaking good career. Patrick Mahomes, one of the greatest athletes any sport we've ever seen any position. And Lamar Jackson has proven like, yeah, I, I am an all-time great and definitely has the opportunity to kind of solidify that these next couple games. Then you got pick 262 <laughs> that like physically isn't anywhere near these guys, right? Has the weakest arm of the bunch. Now he's a better athlete than Jerry Goff, but he really hangs his hat on intangibles, anticipation, stuff that matters at quarterback. No, there, there was a play Baldinger tweeted out, I saw in my timeline, how he checked to a run on one of the, on the long uh, Christian McCaffrey flipped the play, uh, the Christian McCaffrey touchdown. Like, Purdy brings a lot to the table, right? And he made some big throws on that final drive, which they ultimately won. And the point of the game is to win, right? Survive in advance. But there was a reason there was so much negativity after that game, right? There, there wasn't negativity around the Ravens after they scored 24 and answered in the second half and beat the shit out of the Texans. Right. There was around the 49ers because it felt like they were going to lose that game 95% of it. Now, moving forward, like you beat the Lions by a couple touchdowns, it all gets forgotten. You're going to the Super Bowl. And then it becomes can you get revenge on the Ravens or can you take down the champs who took you down five, six years ago in the last Super Bowl that you guys played each other? So the, the pressure on this team, like if you just did the pressure rankings, and listen, it's the conference championship game. You're never guaranteed to come back unless you're the Chiefs, you go every year. But the Ravens, the Niners, and the Lions, who freaking knows? You got There's pressure on you. But I think Kyle and Brock Purdy are in their own category. And rightfully so. Like, I don't even think that's really debatable. Then to me, next would be Harbaugh and Lamar. Uh, but like I said, I, you know, it's what's going to happen? Like, it would be disappointing. But I think you'd feel pretty good about your chances next year. You could argue the Lions have more pressure than the Chiefs. It's like, well, where are they going? Until it's verified that Andy Reid is retiring, I am not banking on him leaving. And as long as you've got Andy and Patrick Mahomes, and I'll promise you this, their offense is going to be better next year. Like, they'll be back. The Lions, like, let's face it, last time they got to a championship, it's like, we're going to get a really good team. We're going to be around. I remember watching the Barry Sanders documentary. He even said it. He's like, we're going to be good. Then they weren't, and they sucked, and they fell apart, and coaches got fired. And they didn't make it back to this game for 30-plus years. The Cowboys are like, God, are we are we the longest streak since at, you know, two and a half decades? So I would probably have the Lions third, but it's weird because they, they could lose this game 40 to nothing and it would suck. I'm, I'm acknowledging that if you're a Lions fan, it's still been probably the most incredible season of the majority of people listening's life, right? So uh, I, I think that the tangible pressure on this Niner team to take care of business especially if it's not raining, whether, whether Debo plays or not. You know, you got a lot invested in that defensive line. And the one reason the 49ers used to beat Sean McVay every single time they played, when they were good and when they were bad, up until the conference championship game, which I think they would trade all those wins for that win. But regardless, was because now the, the Rams, beside Whitworth, th- their offensive line was always kind of questionable. And the Niners used to eat it alive. And Jared Goff can't run. Right, he's he's very old school. He's Eli Philip Rivers. He, he's of that mold, which I still have a soft spot for. Though that type player is is kind of disappearing throughout football. Like you watch college football, hell, you just watch Google like rival 
uh, watch some top 10 quarterbacks on rivals. They, they don't really play like that anymore. But if Jared Goff's untouched, like he can really make you pay, especially with the weapons they have. Assuming Laporte is going to play, Laporte, both the running backs can catch. St. Brown is a fucking baller. Uh, Jameson Williams can just stretch your defense. So you got to hit him. And when you hit him, historically, and I saw Sherman said this, he's like, I've seen the guy fold. Now, I think Jared Goff is mentally tougher now than he was five or six years ago, three or four years ago. I also think he's playing in front of a much better offensive line. So it's harder to hit him. And if Nick Bosa is not dominating the game, like Chase Young, where are you? Do you exist? Like, who's going to pay that guy? Eric Armstead. Like, needs something, paying you $15 million a year. I know you're banged up. Hargrave, you're making $20 million a year. A lot of cash invested into those cats up front. And uh, they they need plays. And if they hit Jared Goff, the Lions have no chance. If they're not touching them, every, and Debo's not playing, game get weird and the game get weird fast. Because the Lions got a bunch of good players. Obviously, you don't make it this far without having high-end talent. And I think the scary thing is, big picture is like, they got a lot of young high-end talent. Like, I don't think the Lions are going anywhere. Uh, so that, that's just some initial thoughts on, on the on the games. It makes me sad sometimes when I think, like, God, football's going away. Uh, not forever, obviously, just for, you know, like eight months till it comes back. And really, not totally, because we get free agency, then we get the draft. But I, I like the games. One thing I saw today, a story that was just kind of like, something's weird here. Last year, when Vic Fangio went to the Dolphins, everyone knew that he was going to go to the Eagles. But then when Jonathan Gannon, and they make the Super Bowl, they couldn't fire the guy that was their coordinator in the Super Bowl. Like, Joe Barry, if the Packers had beat the Niners and then beat the Lions and go to the Super Bowl, like, Joe Barry's keeping his job. Just a reality of the business, right? But once they got that far, because they probably thought about firing. If they had lost to the Giants or even the 49ers, I don't know if Jonathan Gannon was set in stone. They would have fired him, gone with Vic Fangio. Once they made the run and it didn't look like he was going to become a head coach, Vic Fangio's like, guys, I love Philadelphia. I'm from this region, but I, I got to take a job and they're offering me a ton of money. So he goes to the Dolphins. Obviously, then that's why Howie and the Eagles went after the Arizona Cardinals for tampering. But then today, when news breaks that Fangio has mutually departed with the Dolphins, and listen, I don't have much information beside the Pelissaro Adam Schefter tweet, and all signs point to him going back to the Eagles. This is a cutthroat business. Like, this is no different than most people listening, the industries you're in whether you're in the restaurant business, the alcohol business, the fucking software business, the medical sales business, we're all in businesses that you got to be pretty aggressive and at times pretty cutthroat and draw a line in the sand and say, "There's a we have a contract for a reason. And the difference between college football and the National Football League is like a player can leave wherever in college football. A coach can leave wherever. Do you notice in football, like I just can't, I just want Sean McVay to be my coach on the Dallas Cowboys and I can't just take Sean McVay. If this was college football, Sean McVay would be getting enormous offers from people like the Cowboys, the Eagles. He'd be like, hey, we'll pay you $40 million a year. But that's not possible. It doesn't happen. No different with coordinators. I can't just take someone else's awesome offensive coordinator. Right? You can't, the Eagles can't just like, hey, Ben Johnson, if you don't get a job, we'll pay you $10 million to be our offensive coordinator. College, it happens all the time. Because in football, like I sign you to a two or three you know, year contract. Wink Martindale had signed a three-year, basically like $10 million contract. So one of the things when he's like, F it, I'm out, he had to hand back that money, right? He's like, I'm not working for this guy anymore. Why would the Dolphins not want Fangio to stay? Clearly, they weren't mad at him or anything because it's not like they'd fired him. Obviously, if you watch them play, they had a million injuries. What was he supposed to do? And I think we all acknowledge he's one of the better defensive coordinators in the NFL. Like the Eagle, if if the roles were reversed and the Dolphins wanted the Eagles coordinator, who the Eagles did not want to give up, over hell or high water would they allow this to happen? Now the Eagles are cutthroat. They do not mess around. And clearly look how this played out. Like they were aggressive forcing this to happen. How can the Dolphins allow this? If anything, it's like, okay, we're semi-okay. Like maybe we want a different scheme or whatever. You got to trade us like a third round pick for the guy. We're just going to, hey, we'll just give you your money back, whatever. Or you, you just, we'll just rip up the contract. We don't owe you any money. You can do whatever you want. Like Vic Fangio is not going to struggle to get a job. So, hell, we saw it last year 
Sean Payton wanted Vic Fangio, but Vic Fangio wouldn't go back to the Denver Broncos because he had just been fired. So I, I, I just, I, I, I can't fathom. There's a fine line between like treating someone right and, and doing classy things in business and like doing business. And sometimes doing business, it's listen, it's if you go on the X channel, as my mom calls it, and see the the way the media reacts to a lot of stories, like they don't really understand. They're all emotion. Like sometimes in business, you got to remove the emotion. It's pretty black and white. Like I'm not just allowing you to go to the fucking Eagles. I don't care they're not in our division. I don't care that we don't play them. It does not matter. This is not the way, this is not some industry standard that we just have to let you walk. We paid you a lot of money and hired you for a reason. We want you here. You're good. <laughs> you came here for a reason. Now you just change your mind? Like, and I'm all for, like, contracts are meant to be broken. Totally agree. But if this is just because, like, yeah, I'd just rather be in Philly, seems a little crazy to me. Uh, and, and it seems like the Eagles are kind of working the Dolphins here. Maybe the Dolphins just, they've been through enough shady things over the years. They, they don't really want to get into the weeds, but I don't know. Something, something doesn't add up.